Hi friends. Today I'm going to show you how I made this monogram name sign. Again, I will not be slowing down or speeding up anything. And I'm going to start with the pattern. So I only have an eight and a half by 11 printer. So I had to tape four pieces together. This is me taping the fourth piece together. I hold it up to my sliding desk patio door and I tape it all together. This is the best light box you can get for the price. This is how I do all of my large patterns. I live in the Mojave Desert, in California's Mojave Desert, and um, copy shops and things like that are not close to me at all. So I have to do this whenever I want to do a large pattern. As you can see, my pattern is line art only. I never ever fill my pattern. Um, my ink lasts me usually two, almost three years. I know, crazy. And again, I always follow the line. By the way, my wood is already stained. That is a good thing to do every once in a while. I go ahead and I stain it and I let it sit overnight. And then I go ahead and sand it very, very lightly. You see the dust that's coming off of it? That's because the grain is raised a little bit. Here I'm just wiping everything off. But when I wipe it off, I'm only wiping in one direction. This is a pretty big sheet of plywood. So next I'm gonna take my pattern and trace just the space that I need in order to cut this project. I then take my Ryobi jigsaw and I cut out the piece that I just traced. After that, I'm going to put some blue painter's tape over my wood, spray glue the back of my pattern and affix it to the wood. You guys, I am so sorry. After I finished cutting this piece out, I actually went ahead and I put the blue painter's tape on the wood. But when I looked at the video, all I could see was my shirt. I do not have a cameraman. I just usually put my tripod up and that's what happens every once in a while. Moving along, here is my pattern already glued down to my blue painter's tape. And before I start to cut, I go ahead and I take clear packaging tape and put it along the edge of my pattern. Sometimes when you're cutting, your paper may, you know, flop up and down. Well, I want to make sure it doesn't do that. When that happens, it's hard to get the paper to stick to the blue painter's tape again because there's usually dust under it. So this is something I like to do. Again, um, I put it all around my pattern. As you can see here, I went ahead and fast forwarded to where it's already on the edge. It's time to drill the holes. Well, before I drill my holes, I go ahead and I put any old random piece of wood under my sign because I don't want to drill through my table. As you can see, I'm using my finger to position my drill bit. It helps me to keep steady when I'm drilling. Have you noticed where I'm drilling my holes? I'm making sure to drill all of my holes in a place that makes it easy to hide it. When I say hide it, I mean I don't like for people to know where I started or stopped. So I make sure it's in the corner 
where I can easily hide it. I also do this so that I will have more blade time on the actual product instead of cutting in places that I'm going to toss. I'm going to cut the rest of this off screen. I'll be right back. Before I cut this, I want to make sure that my table is nice and smooth and free of glue or tape or anything like that that's going to hinder my scrolling. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I've showed you in a few other videos. I'm going to lightly sand. I'm not pressing hard at all. Lightly sand my table. And I usually take my blade out when I do this, but it's not really necessary. I lightly sand my table and then I wipe it off and I use wax paper. Regular wax paper from the Dollar Tree. You don't have to buy anything expensive, any Carnuba or anything like that. Trust me, this works. Try scrolling without waxing your table and then scroll after you wax your table and you'll see the difference. If you guys try this, can you please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of it. Anyway, enough of that. It's time to get scrolling. Now I've blown this up a little because I want you guys to see what I'm doing. Remember when you're scrolling, you should have steady pressure. Right here, I'm going to go into the corner and do a spinny do. Yep, that's what I call it. Now down at this corner that's coming up, I'm not going to do the spinny do because it's not as sharp. To me, in my mind, it's not. And then again, you don't really need to do the spinny do. If you carefully, I mean carefully, turn your wood without your blade going into any other section. The spinny do's are still great for you to practice because you will need them at certain times. I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let you guys just watch for a little while.
I'm coming to the end of this line right here, but because I taped down part of this pattern earlier, the pattern's not going to come out, but as you can see, I did get the wood out of the bottom. So remember I was telling you guys that I make sure to position my drill holes in certain places. If you watch very carefully, you can't tell where I started or where I stopped because of this process. Watch how I can feel where I started and where I'm going to stop. So I just went all the way into that line and then I back up in there. 
I do the rest of my cut and I'm going to end up in that line when I'm done. So I skipped the A so I can show you how I would do this next to the S. You've just watched me do an A and I figure I'll do that after this.
we're coming to the end of the A and I'm going to cut the rest of this sign off screen and voila here we go I'm actually peeling the blue painters tape off and like I said in the beginning I actually went ahead and sanded and stained this board before I got started cutting that helps a lot when I'm done removing all of the tape I'm going to lightly sand the back of this project and then I'm going to just seal it sometimes the customer likes to have the stain on the top and the sides meaning I would have to go in with a q-tip or a small paintbrush and stain the insides in a second I would like to show you a few close-ups of the work I've done by the way when I'm scrolling I always use a foot pedal now at the end of this video I'm going to show you two foot pedals I have a Harbor Freight foot pedal and I have a thin foot pedal that I've had for at least 18 years I do not remember where I got it from but I like the thinner foot pedal better when you're working on an intricate project the last thing you want to do is take your hands or eyes off of your project in order to turn off or on your saw so that's why I use my foot pedal it's just so much more convenient This is my favorite foot pedal. Again, I don't remember where I got it from. And this one is the Harbor Freight. I only use this one when I'm doing a class in my wood shop. Thanks for watching.